Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently about 20 past 10 on Sunday the 23rd of May. Dane reads. Had a busy weekend, had a busy week to be honest. It's been working, uh, seeing my parents and then art centre events this weekend. Next weekend we've got Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We have Friday night, we have film club. Uh, Saturday we have music in the garden which may well be in the church if uh, the weather's no good. And then on Sunday we have uh, our Sunday jam. And it's also Frog Fest here in High Wycombe, which is like our yearly music festival thing or whatever, except it's a scaled back version. They've got a couple of different stages of the acoustic artists and then they're kind of piggybacking our events as well, but hey ho, we'll, be, we'll, we'll take that, because it's free promo for us and all that. I'm currently reading Pocoon by Spike Milligan, which is okay, it's currently on course for a 3.5 out of 5. I'll probably tell you more about that in my next update, but also there's going to be a full review of it anyway. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to read after that. I have a few books that I've hauled recently, or I might just go for some good old Asimov, because you know where you are with that. Oh, and I'm reading um, Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Palm Sunday, as my bedtime book. It's like all non-fiction pieces about Vonnegut's life. Pretty boring, to be honest. It's easily the worst Vonnegut book that I've read so far. But I want to eventually read everything that he wrote, so I'm working through it. So that's where we're at. Hello, people of the internet. Hi. Hi. Biggie says hi. Biggie says he wants to go down now. Just had a bit of food, haven't you, Biggs? He's got this new uh, cat massager thing here that my uh, my mum... Well, Santa got it for you, didn't he, Biggie? And he likes it a lot, so that's good. Um, today, I went to the art centre earlier. Okay, well, I had my phone counselling, my first phone counselling session, so that's going to be every Monday, except not next Monday, because next Monday's a bank holiday. Yeah, I know, you want to go outside in the porch, don't you? Go on, then. Go on, then. So, um, yeah, I had my phone counselling session. That went pretty well. Then I went to the art centre to go and see Frank because she was having a bad day. Uh, got so much stuff happening. She's stressed because of how much we have to do, but it's like, yeah, I have loads to do as well. We're all struggling. We need to hire somebody else, really. But anyway, uh, other than that, it is all going well. Uh, Books-wise, oh, I'm currently listening to Pam Ayres, some more of me poems, a uh, vinyl record of hers, which is a lot of fun. Getting some productivity done, just doing a bit of filming here. I'm currently reading uh, Vox by Christina Dolce, uh, and I'm enjoying it so far. It's on par for four out of five. This is like, um, um, not post-apocalyptic, uh, dystopian, uh, about you know a society in which women are only allowed 100 words a day, and then they get an electric shock through a bracelet that they have to wear if they exceed that. Um, the technology exists to make that today, you know, which is what's so terrifying. But um, currently reading it, it's all right. It's um, not as well written as I was hoping, but the, the concept is really carrying it. Although it's taken a sort of direction, I kind of wasn't really expecting it to take where the main character's had her bracelet taken off right near the beginning. And she's been um, asked to go and help the president's brother's wife. No, the president's brother, sorry, not the wife. They wouldn't care about the wife. Um, her kids are little shits as well, particularly the boys. Um, I think it's maybe a bit too heavy-handed with some of the, um, like some of the bits of it as well. It just, um, it kind of feels a bit man hatey and I just worry that for a lot of readers that would put them off. I don't mind it too much because I hate men as well. I hate women too. I hate everybody basically. Uh, Non-binary people hate you too. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity hater is what I'm trying to say. Humanity in general is garbage, but um, animals are good. So yeah, I'm still enjoying it so far, and a full review of this will be coming soon. And I'm off to film the start of that, although I'm only 100 pages in, so I like tend to film them in, in chunks, you know. What I do is I film up to midnight, and then after midnight, if I'm still awake, I do some editing. And it's almost midnight, so I'm gonna go and finish this and then do some editing. We're blurry, biggie. Aren't we? Aren't we blurry? Oh, we're not blurry anymore. Hello, people of the internet. Dane and Biggie here. Yeah, we're here, aren't we, Biggie? I have a blurry face, but I think you're not blurry. You want to go down? Do you? Let me put you down, boy -o. Oh, I love you. Oh, you smell good and you're so soft. So soft. Yes. Hello, everybody. It is, what is it? Are you trying to eat me? It is uh, Wednesday the 26th of May. I'm very tired, I had four Zooms today. Um, let's think, was it three client Zooms and one interview for my radio show? Um, but it's all good, oh and I had like two yesterday as well. Been back and forth to the art centre a bit as well, although not today, which is good, because there's so much to do, there is so much to do. But 
I finished reading Vox. Uh, I'll probably downgrade it to like 3.5 out of 5. It sort of lost its way, I think. It's one of those where um, the premise was great and a lot of the lines in it were great, but the actual book itself was a bit eh from time to time. Um, but yeah, full review of that coming soon. I'm now reading Double Kiss by Ronnie O'Sullivan, the snooker player. And this is part of like this little crime series he's got set by this guy who owns a snooker club. I'm pretty sure it's ghost written, but hey ho, it's all right. Um, so yeah, just doing a quick bit of filming now, just to catch up. Maybe some editing later. I, uh, I've done a lot of sleeping as well, so there is that. Um, but that means I now have loads of work to do. So if any of my clients are watching this, I'm doing it. Leave it, I'm doing it. After I finish reading Ronnie O'Sullivan, I'm probably gonna read The Wayward Bus by John Steinbeck, so that's very cool. I had some vinyls come in today. Sorry, vinyl, uh, the plural is singular. Um, so I'm currently, I'm listening to this, The Gift of Music, 75 Romantic Memories from Your Favourite Orchestras. So I'm working my way through this while simultaneously listening to uh, the Duolingo French podcast. Um, they've now added the French podcast into Duolingo as well, so you can get points and experience for listening to it. But I've already listened to it, so I have to leave my phone playing it on like the lowest volume setting, so it goes through and I get the experience for doing what I've already done. So that's kind of annoying, I haven't really thought that through. Um, but I think that's only available in the French and Spanish courses anyway. So I've, I've just been doing that and I have actually, there are some new episodes to the podcast. Although this is the other thing, in the app, they're like grouped together by subject matter as opposed to the order that they're in the podcast. So there are like three or four new episodes that I'm listening to on Spotify rather than through Duolingo because I don't know which ones I've listened to. Um, but hey ho, that's where we are. Um, I've got a tag to go and film as well, so I'm going to go and do that in a minute. And uh, I'm uploading some videos because my internet's a piece of shit, mate. So it just conks out whenever I upload stuff. So I have to upload videos. Like while I'm filming now, I'm not using the internet so I can let it upload. But if I'm trying to watch Netflix, I can't upload at the same time. It's a nightmare. So I have like 14 or something booktube videos rendered, ready to go. They just need to upload. Um, and I also have been posting in the Open Mic Slate Facebook group, which is like a virtual open mic thing. But again, every time I upload a video to that, it dies, my internet dies on me. So, anyway, yeah. What up, homies? It's been a busy few days. I guess we're gonna do this as one of those like two week vlogs I sometimes do where I forget to do an outro. Uh, it's currently the 2nd of June, Wednesday the 2nd of June. Uh, I guess I'll give you some life updates and then I'll tell you about the books I've been reading. So in terms of life, it was busy old weekend. So I worked at the Arts Centre three days in a row. So Friday night we had film night and we had the commitments. Very good. Saturday we had music in the garden which was organised by uh, Caitlin who's been doing work experience with us. So they were all like young bands, like 18 or so. Uh, and they were all very good actually. It was like surprising the quality of it. And I was working the bar there and then Sunday we had our Sunday jam and I played a few tunes at that. Um, this week I've mostly been doing loads of work still, it was bank holiday Monday, but I don't really get bank holidays, so bank holidays are like public holidays here in the UK, I think there was a bank holiday uh, in the US as well, like Labour Day or something, I don't know, but um, yeah, I was just catching up with work and all that stuff, and then I was like busting a bollock to get my radio show out because I left it to the last minute again. Today I had my first Covid vaccine, so they stabbed Wolfie in the face. My arm's pretty sore now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and I've been feeling a bit nauseous, but um, part of that could be because it's been super hot as well. And it was like a five mile walk there and back, so um, I, I was pretty dehydrated as well and haven't eaten that much. So I am feeling a little bit better now, so that's all good. Uh, oh, and Monday, on Monday actually as well, I also went into town because we had a three day music festival over the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Obviously I couldn't go on the Saturday or the Sunday because I was working, but um, I was able to go on the Monday to see a couple of my friends perform. And then after that, uh, while I was there, I was sitting on the floor watching this band. I get a tap on my shoulder and turned around and it was Ruth, who's my boss at the art center. Uh, and she said uh, she was there with Fran, who is um, like my colleague at the art centre, I guess. Uh, so Fran was there with her kid Hugo. Uh, Ruth's partner Richard was there, and a sound guy called Nidge as well with his girlfriend. So um, went there, and I was like, oh, I'll just have the one. I'm still not drinking, so I was on the lemonade, and I stayed for like three hours because we we're having a nice old chat. And uh, they do pizza there as well, so I shared a vegan pizza with Fran. That was very nice. Um, 
books. So I'm currently reading Close, 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 Music, 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 Boys, Boys, Boys by Viv Albertine. She was the guitarist in a band called The Slits and she was also in a relationship with uh, a guy from who was in The Clash. This was actually given to me by a friend called Juliet, Juliet Hamilton of The Tired Dressmaker. So she was at the Music in the Garden on Saturday and she gave me this book so that was cool and I'm enjoying it so far, more, more than I thought I would actually because I don't really know The Slits for their music or anything. Um, but it's just a really interesting music memoir. I have a bunch down here. Oh god! I finished uh, Miguel Barclay's Vegan One Pound Meals. I'd give this like a 3.5 out of 5. It's okay if you're looking for some like vegan food inspiration, but really I only tried about a half dozen recipes from it, and only one of them was good enough to go on my overall master list. Uh, which was, which one was that? That was my Sloppy Joe's, Vegan Sloppy Joe's. That was quite tasty. Um, and also, they're not really one pound meals because, for example, some of them require tofu and it's like, well, you can't get tofu for less than a pound. So they compromise by being like, you need a quarter of a block of tofu and it's like, well then it, you know, <laughs> they don't sell them by the quarter. So uh, it was all right though. Um, I also read The Wayward Bus by John Steinbeck. This one has fallen apart, unfortunately. Uh, but this was quite good. Uh, very Steinbecky, so it kind of focused a lot. A lot of like real worldy stuff, I guess. Um, although it was quite hard for me to relate to it because obviously it's from a different time period to the one I, I'm in. So, uh, so there was that. But I still enjoyed it okay. Probably like a week 3.5 out of 5. Um, full review, full review of that one coming soon. I also read To A God Unknown, uh, which this one I found it a lot harder to relate to and just wasn't too interested in it. You know, kind of the theme for this is like they're, this, they're waiting for the rain because the rain is life and they're all farmers and shit, you know? Um, so yeah, it was a bit slow going for me. It was like beautifully written and the dialogue was great, but I still, I gave it like a three out of five because the enjoyment factor was pretty low. I also finished reading Palm Sunday by Kurt Vonnegut, so this was my bedtime book. So I got to when I was, hello Biggie, you gonna come say hello? Kitty cats here! Mwah. So I got to when I was about 30 pages from the end of Palm Sunday, didn't I Biggie? Yes. And then I switched it out from my bedtime book to my main book just to finish it off. But it was pretty interesting, I guess. Uh, definitely like a classic bedtime book because it's just like a bunch of different essays and stuff brought together It didn't really feel cohesive either like it read as though Vonnegut had been dead and somebody had just gone through all of his files and just bunged what they could into a book to kind of get a bit more money out of the old horse But it turns out he himself worked on it. So I don't know um, Wasn't great, but yeah, probably a strong three out of five for that one And then we have a double kiss by Ronnie O'Sullivan. So Ronnie O'Sullivan is a snooker player and this was a um, like a crime novel, the second in his Soho Nights series. And again, it was just okay. Um, you know, the first one was actually really good because the first one starts off like straight away. The guy wakes up, like doesn't remember where he is or how he got there because he got super drunk. And then he discovers he's been like framed for murder. Whereas this one, it took like 150 pages just to get to the meat of the storyline, you know? So it really over relied on you being involved, invested in the characters, which I wasn't. Although I did kind of remember them from before. There is a third one in this series, which I will be reading, but I'm in no particular rush to get to it. This one I would give like a week, three out of five, uh, 3.5 out of five to, even though I'm a Ronnie O'Sullivan fan. And also it's, it, it's ghost written, it's gotta be, right? So that is where we're at. Um, I'm currently watching Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker because I've never uh, watched the... I watched the first one, The Force Awakens, at the new ones and then that's it. I watched uh, Solo the other day as well. So I'm just working my way through those. Um, I also caught up to date with the rest of the Duolingo French podcast. So uh, that's all listened to now. And my YouTube subscriptions I'm pretty much up to date with as well. Up to date with Netflix. So, um, yeah, after I finish watching these, these last two Star Wars movies, um, I'm, I'm done. I, I'll just be watching YouTube again and going to sort of Let's Plays. So uh, there's a few Resident Evil Let's Plays I want to watch. And then there was a guy I was watching play The Witcher, so I'll, I'll watch him finish that off. So that is where we're at. So I will catch you guys later. It is too hot, man. I don't know how much filming I'm even going to be able to do. Hello everybody, it is me, I'm super tired. I haven't shot vlog for a long time, mate. Uh, so the current issue is that like I've been doing loads of work at the art centre, then there's, so I've been lo like loads of event work. Then there's all the marketing work, then there's all my other clients. Uh, and so I just haven't had any time to film whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, I would update you, but I don't remember when the last time I filmed was. I think it was early last week. So this weekend, 
Saturday we had music in the garden with Guitari Lounge, which was like an under 18s open mic night doing a takeover. Um, so I was there doing like working on my laptop while also running the bar. Sunday we had Monster Day, which was very cool. So we had Stephen Colgan, who's a local, uh, he's a local author, and um, he also makes this monsters, does this monster zoo basically. So that was cool. Lots of kids there. Uh, Dan, who is uh, our, one of the resident artists at Wickham Art Centre, he did a mural of Godzilla vs King Kong. He did the whole thing in a day, which was very cool. Uh, and we had Victoria Snaith of Dreadfuls Theatre doing some live uh, theatre, which was very good as well. Good little day. Um, yeah, so that's that. Mortgage wise, I've been speaking to a new mortgage broker. The current thing is my existing guy, he reckons the most I can get is about £120,000, which might sound like a lot, but it means I have to put down 40, well, I have to, it's about £50,000, which is what, US dollars is the deposit I'd need to put down. So bear in mind when I started looking at properties, it was because the government had promised to help people, first time buyers, to put down a 5% deposit, and now I'm looking at having to put down about 30%. And I have to pay to apply, even though they might just turn me down and keep the money, which is ridiculous. Uh, but I found another guy who reckons he can get me £139,000, which still isn't quite as much as I'd need, so I'd still need to borrow some money from my dad. But, um, you know, if... so um, we're seeing how that goes, basically. My granddad, bless him, he uh, fell down in uh, town, in the Tamworth, in the town I grew up. There's a shopping centre there, and it's got this big flight of stairs. And one of the bricks had come loose on the stairs, and they just left it. So yeah, my granddad fell down some stairs. Um, he's got two black eyes, and he's hurt his thumb. Luckily, he hasn't broken it. Um, and I, I sent him an email, being like, you know, uh, you know, sorry to hear it happen, but you know, at least he can take some solace. He, he's still like fully mobile, and also like if it had been a pregnant woman who was like eight months pregnant, you know, she could have lost the baby. So. In some ways, I guess it's good that it was him who fell, but still, bless him, he's like 75, and you can't be falling down stairs and stuff, and it's not his fault, like, it's not as though he's like a doddery old geezer, he's like perfectly, uh, perfectly healthy, perfectly fine. Uh, they just, they're just fucked up, basically, and then they didn't cordon it off, and then they did cordon it off after he fell, and it's like, great, just in time. So, um, yeah, they're doing a letter of complaint about that and trying to seek some compensation from the shopping centre and he's now said to me he might give me some of the compensation money if they get some to help me with the house and it's like I don't know how I feel about that you know like obviously I would have rather he just hadn't fallen um, I'd rather nobody had fallen like I'd rather somebody else rather than him <laughs> and I'd rather nobody you know I'd rather it had been me to be honest that would have been the easiest thing but yeah so that's a bit shitty in terms of books I've finished reading this one Close, 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 music, 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 boys, 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 by Viv Albertine. She was a guitarist in The Slits. Uh, and this is like her memoir. It was pretty interesting. Probably like a four out of five for that one. I also read the Hugo Award winners volume one by Isaac Asimov. 3.5 out of five. It was all right. The problem is, is like, because it's literally just the novellas that won Hugo Awards. And I don't really do awards. So I'm like, a lot of these don't really, like, they're just not particularly good stories in my opinion. But... Also, I'm obviously reading it because I'm an Asimov fan, and uh, there's no Asimov apart from the introduction, so hey ho. I'm now reading Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. Obviously, you've probably heard of this because of the Netflix show. I'm about, what, 90 pages in, I only started it today. I haven't tabbed much out, but it's not because it's not a good book, it's actually really good and could go on to be like my top book of the quarter. Um, but. The Netflix adaptation was so accurate to the book that there's nothing really new. The like the only things I've tabbed out like they did just describe Benji and he's like got a thick black moustache and it's like you, you you cast that kid from Love Actually in it, mate. He he looked he had bum fluff. So anyway, uh, yeah, overall though it's really good. Really enjoying the writing style as well. But it is it's just like it feels like a reread because I've seen the show. But hey ho, I am enjoying reading it and I will probably use it as, a, as an excuse to rewatch the show after I've finished. Um, so that'll be, that'll be good. And again, I'm enjoying uh, Tevis's writing style so much that I'm probably going to read everything else that he's done as well. Um, I mean, he's dead now and he only had about six books, so that's kind of sad. No, pro no progress on my own books again, just because I've been so busy working. After this, I'm going to read uh, the Hugo Award Winners Volume 2 by Asimov, although obviously I don't have great hopes after the first one. My bedtime book, I'm reading F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Beautiful and the Damned. Not very good, except for one paragraph, which I really enjoyed, which I put on my Instagram. But uh, overall, it's just a chore, but I'm probably over a third of the way through it now, so there's that. Not been sleeping pretty well. 
I had a counselling yesterday, radio show went out today, I was up until 6am this morning getting that finished and I need to go and prep the next one. <laughs> but yeah, that's where I'm at. This weekend, tomorrow I'm supposed to be helping at the art centre to set up an exhibition, but I'm gonna try and see if I can get out of it because I just have so much work. I like, I can't, I just don't have the capacity to do it really. Uh, Friday, it's the open mic at the art centre and I was hoping just to sort of go along and host it and hang out with my mates. Um, but the guy who normally does sound can't be there. Another guy who normally helps can't be there. So I'm gonna have to do sound. So now I'm working on my birthday, which is exactly what I didn't want to do. Uh, then there's Saturday, I should be working all day Saturday for this gallery event thing. Although again, I'm going to see if I can just go down for a couple of hours and then leave because I don't, I don't have the capacity to do it. Um, especially because on Sunday I'm going into, into London, I'm going off on a date. Um, we're going to go to uh, the Victorian Albert Museum. Uh, the girl I'm going on a date with, uh, she's pretty into, into dance and obviously I'm just into the arts in general. And they have an exhibition at the VNA on dance as well. Um, and I have actually been not too long ago, like just before COVID I think. Um, and it, I think it was the first time I'd ever been, but I obviously I didn't get to see everything so I'm quite, quite excited to go to that. And then I think hopefully we're going to go and eat some vegan food and then maybe go and do a Jack the Ripper walk, which I've never done. So that's Sunday. So Sunday is my birthday celebrations now. My first full day off 2019 2000 yeah probably early 2019 so that's exciting since the start of covid i've worked i think i'm currently on 155 extra days um and bearing in mind that there haven't been 155 non-working days so i basically had every day as a working day and then done some more on top of that as well which is why i'm so fucking exhausted and i still can't get a mortgage it's ridiculous but yes, that's where I'm at, and I'm now going to love you and leave you, because this has been a bumper uh, vlog, and I haven't edited any of it, obviously. Falling behind on my booktube editing and my filming, I have like 20 videos to, to film. Uh, did I say the date? It's um, Tuesday the 8th of June, 2021. There we go. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to love you and leave you, so thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.